Hi, this is Mark Burnett with RepoBrain.com. Today, we're back at the Koi Pond. A lot of you liked our Koi Pond video we have up on YouTube and other sites and have written us and asked, how do you build that thing? Tell me. Well, we're here to get down to a little bit more of the construction and exactly how we built this above ground Koi Pond. Let's take a look. The pond is four feet by eight feet using four by four uh, pressure treated lumber, which we got at the lumber yard. And essentially you can, you can use any type of uh, particular type of wood you would like. We just used a regular uh, pressure treated wood that you'd build a deck out of. And what we did is we joined it at each corner here, just like this. We, we cut one piece short. In other words, we'd have this feet eight feet long, this, this one a little bit shorter, allowing room for our other four by four to come in here. And we just kept doing that back and forth. This gave us a lot of strength in this corner. On the bottom here, which you can't really see, is a piece of four by eight uh, outside plywood. In this case, it's an outside sheeting. And that outside sheeting is guaranteed to last for like 15 years against rain, hail, and all that kind of stuff. We just picked up a piece of that, and that worked out pretty good. Uh, we put that at the bottom. We turned it. We essentially turned it over, put on our four pieces, tacked it in with a, with a couple nails just to give it some strength, and then set it back up to start our base. Once we got this base piece in, we then took and drilled through with a half inch drill all the way through to the other side, to this other board. Then we took a bolt, which is 10 inches long, half inch bolt, bolt and nut with washers and put it through. And then we tighten that up. So you gotta be a little careful when you're putting this through. You gotta make sure you got enough threads on the other side that this can actually tighten down. So it's a little tricky. You gotta get it right. You gotta measure it right. But fortunately you have the advantage of you're always on top so you can kind of measure up here. We just kind of eyeballed it and it worked out fine each time. So you can see a couple of these are not as straight, but the main point is they bring these two pieces of wood together and they hold it together very, very strong. So there's just no way the water or the pressure can force its way out of here. It is, it is bolted together literally very, very strong. And we did that for each piece as we came up. We kept putting in another lag bolt, another bolt, another bolt or bolt and nut. And that added, that got all our strength in here. And as we're going up, once we put on our second section, we then took a lag bolt, a little bit shorter one than this, pre-drilled it with a 3 8 inch drill down to about here, if we're starting here. And then we took a lag bolt smaller than this. And then we, we, we put it in here so that the head would go actually past this point, so it'd be sunk in. So we pre-drilled it a little bit with a larger drill and then got this all the way down in here. We put four on the long side and two on the short side, these lag bolts each time. Now, we did this because this would give us strength this way, so pulling out would be a lot harder with these. all these boards were locked together, and that was part of that point. When we got to the third uh, board, or set of boards, uh, we then moved over one. We took a marker, we put a magic marker on the inside to mark where that was, because the moment you put the board on, you can't tell where you where you are, and you don't want to drill through your other top of your bolt. So by putting a magic marker on the inside, we could tell where we were at, move over a little bit more, and then this time go to a 10 inch lag bolt and put it all the way through. So it's grabbing all three boards at that time. And we did this again, four down here, four down here, each time moving it a little bit more over, uh, giving it total strength. So as we got here, we moved it over. As we got here, we moved it over all these combined in here to form this strength and all the sides and then we went back and tightened all the bolts here into all of this was very very strong and and completely down then we got our liner now the liner this is a four you know, this is probably about a 50 or 60 mil liner here i just happened to get lucky and find that that's a little bit thicker most of the time you're going to see 45 mil liner uh, 45 mil liner the advantage is it's a little more pliable a little more easier to uh, work with uh, but obviously the 50 or 60 if you can get it is going to be a lot thicker and a lot stronger and have a lot more resistance. Uh, the more difficult part is it's, it's just harder to form into the shapes and things that you need. We overlap this, uh, overlap the, the, this top portion and when we overlap this top portion with the liner we then tacked it down with tacks, cut it with a razor blade all the way around and then we put just a pressure treated uh, board on top of that 
and just tack it in to hold all this in place. Then, if you look here, the liner right in here uh, kind of bulges out a little bit in some spots, and that's fine. Uh, but it forms a nice little uh, fold like a napkin inside here. And you really have to do that. There's no way around it. You're dealing with a square, so there's no other way around that. But once this is sealed in, we've never had any leaks. This has gone through two seasons. Uh, it's been fine. Uh, it, the most expensive thing in here was probably the liner, which was we paid about $100 for this particular one. Oversized it. It's not 4x8. We probably bought... Uh, 12 by 15 if I'm not mistaken size so that we'd have plenty of leftover in case there was a problem or, or something like that uh, So far there hasn't been there hasn't been any issues um, But again thicker better uh, on this particular thing uh, on the liner and probably your most expensive piece uh, Probably shipping wise uh, it's going to be more expensive $50 or more to ship this It's very very heavy very bulky uh, when it comes in so you gotta kind of have to take that into consideration the wood was actually not that expensive probably the most time-consuming part about building this whole pond was the fact that uh, putting the bolts in and getting that in takes a lot of time it's a lot of handwork um, my boys came out and helped me and I can tell you we spent a couple nights here uh, putting those bolts in by hand uh, those lag bolts 10 inches can take a little while to drive through all that wood but Again, it came out very, very strong and worked, and we haven't had a problem. And as you can see, the fish seem to uh, seem to like it. Uh, I gave it a good test fill, let it wash out a couple of days, drained it all the way out, and then refilled it, just making sure it was clean. And then you should be good to go with the koi. They seem to like it. <laughs>